looking at this question, it says a child is jumping up and down on a trampoline. Okay, let me just start doodling a bit. Uh, start doodling a bit so that I have um, so that I make sure that I um, don't forget any information. So I have a trampoline here, and I have a blue child. Oops, too blue. I have a light blue child who's jumping up and down. The trampoline exerts a spring force on the child with a constant that. Oh, um, so let me just have some different pictures. So this is like a child at equilibrium position. But if uh, uh, when the trampoline is exerting a force on the child, that means the child has kind of pushed it down on the trampoline and is down somewhere here. Um, and uh, there are some other moments in time as the child is bouncing up and down. Let me just draw one more here where the uh, trampoline will, will have come back to equilibrium position and child will be somewhere over here. And there's some sort of height that they reach. Uh, at the highest point, yeah, so... Um, let me give this some labels. Uh, this is going to be the spring force that we'll refer to in a bit. And this is going to be the height. Above the level surface trampoline, what is the compression distance of the trampoline? Okay. Um, oh, wow. I don't think this is uh, even... Is that an energy question? Uh, you know, I, I guess it is. It is an energy question. Um, so we have the mass of the child. So uh, let me treat this uh, like a conservation law strategy problem. The very first step or even step number zero is you should identify conserved quantity. And uh, for the time being, it'll be super simple. The only quantity that could possibly be conserved right now is energy. So it's going to be energy that's conserved. And, you know, sometimes I guess it might matter if it's a kinetic energy that's conserved or if it's kinetic plus potential energy that's conserved. So... I think uh, it's good to have an uh, image of this child uh, jumping up and down on the trampoline in mind. And as you visualize that, you should think to yourself, um, at any time in that interaction, is energy uh, not conserved? And, 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 you know, you should learn to ignore kind of minor details like air resistance, uh, the child kind of flexing their legs. And, you know, imagine child is a, a spherical child with no legs moving in vacuum. <laughs> and I hope you have a kind of intuitive feel that energy is conserved throughout the entire process. There's no moment in uh, time in, of this whole interaction where you would say energy is significantly not conserved. So once you realize that, once you kind of come to grips with that, then this particular picture, I don't think I even need to use it. Because uh, for the next step, where I identify snapshots, uh, I'm going to be using this snapshot as a snapshot one, which will, you know, give me the the displacement of the trampoline that uh, I will need to deal with, delta x. And I will work with this snapshot where I'm given the height that the child reaches, which is somehow going to be useful. So I'm just going to go all the way from beginning to the end. And I know sometimes there's a kind of... Um, temptation for people to kind of insert this intermediate step of, you know, saying, oh, the child is moving at some speed of V0. And, you know, from here to here, use conservation of, of energy to figure out the V0. From here to here, use conservation of energy to relate V0 to H. If you do that, that's, uh, that's not wrong. But again, I'm saying it's uh, unnecessary. That middle step is unnecessary. You can just go straight from beginning to the end as long as you convince yourself that there is no energy non-conserving step in between. So so with that, uh, I'm going to write down my conservation law equation. So what I'm going to be saying is, okay, my total energy at the initial step, snapshot 1, is equal to my total energy in the other snapshot, snapshot 2. So let me, and, and the total energy as before will be kinetic energy 
plus the potential energy. And here I'm just gonna take care to make sure that I express both uh, both forms of energy. So there's the gravitational potential energy that you have seen, mass times g times h, and there's the spring potential energy, which is one half spring constant times uh, delta x squared. So uh, I think that's going to matter in snapshot one, where there's going to be both the forms of potential energy to worry about. So that's equal to kinetic energy in snapshot two plus the potential energy in snapshot two. Now, as you go to next step, I hope as you um, look at these two pictures that you have some sense that um, the speed in both cases is approximately zero. If uh, you are looking at the child at the maximum compression, at the maximum height, that means, you know, they are like in the turning point. So they are at approximately zero, well, they're exactly at zero speed at the turning point. And um, so, so with that realization, what's going to happen is your kinetic energies will just be zero. You don't have to worry about them. It's uh, um, our conservation of energy expression becomes energy, potential energy in this one snapshot being equal to potential energy at this other snapshot. So let me write down that expression, potential energy in snapshot one. It's going to involve the spring potential energy, K times delta X squared. And you are going to have gravitational potential energy. I want to set this as Y equals zero. So when the child is compressed by distance delta X, the child will have negative gravitational potential energy minus mg delta x. Or I could have written it as plus mg times minus delta x. That's equal to mg times h, gravitational potential energy at the top, and there's no more uh, spring potential energy to be concerned with. So let's uh, look at this for a bit. Um, and uh, I, I spot two issues. So looking at this equation, I think I have too many unknowns. So I'm solving for delta x, that's an unknown. And squared or linear, in terms of counting unknowns, that's fine. Um, mass is known, that's good. G is known, H is known. I don't know spring constant. Uh, or, no, 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 sorry. I mislabeled it before. I do know the spring constant. Um, and <laughs> Good, good, good. Uh, uh, I was labeling it in an attempt so that I don't misunderstand things, but I wasn't quite thinking. This looking at the unit Newton per meter, that is the spring constant. Okay, um, I was thinking I'm gonna have to work out the spring constant from knowing the force of the spring, but but I don't need that. I am given the spring constant, so I can just use it. Uh, that's not a unknown. I can just use it. So um, so that brings us to the second problem which is that um, I got this a quadratic equation. I, I really don't want to use quadratic formula. And um, let me see if I can do a bit of an approximation. I have a feeling, um, just to kind of looking at these expressions, and especially given that they are asking us for the, um, the displacement in centimeters, I have a sense, just an intuitive sense, that this uh, relationship might be true. That this uh, uh, one half k, k delta x squared, spring potential energy, I have a sense that that might be much greater than the magnitude of this gravitational potential energy change due to the compression. If this is true, then what I can do is I can approximate this left-hand side with the expression one half k delta x squared and say that's equal to mgh. And um, I can solve for this delta x squared without using any quadratic formula. It's so simple, I can even just do it in my head. It's a delta x is equal to square root of 2 times mgh divided by k. So I am using an approximation. So as I use this approximation, I am first going to plug in the numbers 
and see what my approximate answer is using this approximation method. And there are some things I can watch out for to see if it's a good approximation or not. If it turns out to be a good approximation, I'll just plug in the number, see if it gets graded as correct. Uh, now, if um, the numbers I get indicate that the approximation that I had made is not good approximation, then I'll come back and um, then use the computer algebra system to, to solve this equation. So uh, let me just work out the numbers for now. Square root of 2 times the mass, 34 kilogram, times the g, 9.8, times the h, uh, that's going to be 1 meter, uh, divided by spring constant, uh, 4750 newton per meter, all in basic SI units. The answer I get will be in the uh, meters. So I need to convert it to centimeters by multiplying by 100 to plug in. So working out the numbers there, I get 0 0.37 meter or centimeters. Okay. So the number I'm comparing is how does this number compare to one meter? And it's a significant fraction of a meter. So the approximation I made, it's probably not good. When I plug in this number, 37.5, it should tell me that that's wrong. Because it will have been, yeah, more, off by more than 1%. So, all right, didn't work. So let me just use computer algebra system and uh, to help me avoid having to do, um, having to use quadratic formula. I mean, I, I know it, it's just tedious. So I'm going to declare all my variables. Um, okay. And instead of delta x, I'm just going to use x. Um, I have m, g, I already declared the x. Uh, I need the h. I think that's all the variables I need. Using these variables, I'm going to define my equation. It'll be 1 half times k times x squared minus m times g times x is equal to, again, two assignment symbols, m times g times h. Um, and I assign this uh, expression into the variable equation. And I use the solve function. Um, you can refer to internal documentation with help solve if you need it. I don't need it. I use this many times. I'm going to solve for equation and I'm solving for x. And uh, let me store this into a variable so that I can look at how many solutions I got and make sure I know what I'm going to work with. So solve this. Yeah, I get two solutions because of this uh, square. Um, it kind of um, doesn't matter if the whole quantity is negative or positive. I'm staring at this. If anything's going to be negative, I think it's this quantity that will be negative. So let me make sure I stick with the positive answer. So that will be the sec second answer I got. So solution, the second answer, or the index uh, one. And uh, let me plug in the numbers. I'll use, uh, or, you know, this is the solution that I'm going to work with. And let me substitute in the numbers. Uh, mass is 34 kilogram. Um, K is... Uh, 4750 and I'm putting these dots to make sure that it does decimal approximation. H is 1 meters and I think that's everything. Uh, let me see if it will give me purely numerical answer. Um, oh, I forgot G. That's why. Okay, G is equal to 9.8. Alright, yeah. 0. Point, yeah, 45.1 or, or you know in centimeters 45.1 centimeter. Yeah, that's definitely quite a bit different from what I had. That's why it wouldn't grade it as correct. Although, you know, you can see that if you are looking for like an appro appro <laughs> approximate answer, like something that's within a factor of two, then the approximation I made would have been good. Um, like if you are trying to make sure will the child hit the ground or not, and you um, add in some engineering safety margin, then, you know, <laughs> then, um, then the approximated result could have been good, but, you know, not to the 1% tolerance that the system w would have been enforcing.